You know those moments where you think, I wish I would have learned this in school? Those are the topics that we love to talk about. Join me each week as I interview experts sharing their strategies for solving problems that us young adults will face throughout our 20s and 30s. So what are you waiting for? If you want new episodes about adulting advice every Monday, hit that follow button. Has the sexual chemistry in your relationship turned dull? Bedroom boredom is a really common issue in relationships, so there's nothing to beat yourself up about. We get comfortable in our patterns, the same positions, techniques, places, although great at first, become predictable and eventually boring. I don't need to ask a stupid rhetorical question here. I know that you don't want to have a boring sex life. No one wants that. So let's reignite some excitement in the bedroom. But we know it's not that simple, or we'd already be doing it already. How do I talk to my partner about this? And once they're on board, what do we do to quote, quote, spice things up? What if you had a list of ideas and someone to help bridge that conversation with you and your partner? Insert fan favorite guest, Susan Bratton, who first appeared on episode 63. Susan is back on to share something she created to help us with this exact problem, a sex life bucket list. In this conversation, Susan will walk you through how to create and use your sex life bucket list. And of course, if I have an hour with Susan, I am not going to miss the opportunity to ask for some tips and techniques as well. We get into some hot and heavy conversation about ejaculatory choice, how to be louder in the bedroom, and how to share feedback with your partner that leaves them feeling encouraged. If you are lacking confidence in your body, you will want to stay tuned until the end because Susan brings it home with a reassuring monologue. You guys know the drill. If you're a listener of the show and haven't left us a rating review, we'd really appreciate it if you did. And if you're new, nothing for you to do. Welcome, sit back, relax, and let's learn something new. I hope you enjoy my conversation with the orgasmonaut an intimacy expert to million, Susan Bratt. Susan Bratton, back on The Struggle is Real. How are you? I'm not struggling at all today. Thank you. <laughs> That's great I that know. you're not struggling, but lots of audience members are struggling with a lot of topics I think we're going to talk about today. So excited to have you back on. We chatted last May. And I dropped that episode and it quickly grew to one of my top episodes out there. I have this personal development spin on the show. So I was actually really curious to see how well sex sold as an episode, but it was well received, probably because outside of money, a thing that is probably talked about even less than that is sex. And you're, bring, you're doing such a good job demystifying all of this conversation. So excited to, to jump back into things today and and talk about a few things that we didn't get to really chat about in the first conversation. Yeah, it's interesting too, Justin, because sex is something that people struggle with. And there's so much trauma, repression, ignorance, fear, shame in our sexuality that it makes it difficult for people to, to even put into words what their issues are. And at the same time, your sexuality is a part of your personal growth. And as you age, the sex you had in your 20s is going to be totally different than what you do in your 30s or your 40s or your 50s or your 60s or your 70s or your 80s or your 90s, if you're lucky, because your sexuality can fuel your creativity and it can keep you young. I recently heard about a study that took 3,800 people showed them pictures of people from 18 to 80, and they had to guess their ages. And the people who had intimacy three times a week or more looked 10 years younger than their cohorts. And I think that's partly because of the, the vascular explosions that you have, the nervous system reboot that you get the flooding of oxytocin and other feel-good hormones and neurotransmitters, just the grounding and also 
the feeling loved and loving that come from close intimacy. They all not only fuel our overall vitality, but they also fuel our creativity and our connection, not only to ourselves but to others. And so sex is so good for you that if people thought about sex as one of the pillars of their health, if they thought about it like, oh, I need to not only learn financial skills and I, I need to understand, you know, everything from insurance to finances to the things I need for my career, my, vo- you know, my vocational skills, et cetera. If they were like, I got to make sure I keep doing a good job learning about sex, then ultimately at the end of their life, they'd have a better life. Because what a lot of people don't really even think about is that it's pretty easy to make a baby. You know, you know what part to stick in what (laughs) part to make a baby. It doesn't take any lovemaking skills per se to procreate, but it takes a lot of skills to date well, to have great sexual experiences while you're dating. It takes even more skill to be in a long-term monogamous relationship and care for your partner's sexual growth as well as your own and keep it going and not kind of surrender to the monotony of monogamy. So many couples end up with the paradigm of, well, I want sex all the time, but my partner doesn't. And then I'm begging for it. And then that just pisses me off. And I feel rejected. And then I check out emotionally. And then we end up as platonic roommates. And then we get divorced and I marry someone else. And the same thing happens again. (laughs) What the what? So that's the part that I like people to understand is that it's like anything. If you don't have a goal, if you don't know where you're going, you don't get there. I'm now 61 and I have the most incredible sex life. I have incredible experiences. It's super fun. It feels better than it's ever felt. My genitals are in better working order than they were when I was half my age. Literally my orgasmic intensity and how many ways I can orgasm and how comfortable I am either surrendering to my pleasure with my partner or running the bedroom game. All of those. And I just have this panoply of things that I love to do. And so I let my body guide me as to what's going to feel good on any particular date with my partner, love making date. And I have ease about it and it's joyful and I think so many people, they're stuck in a rut. They've got one pathway to orgasm. They're not really feeling in sync with their partner's libido, their partner, or they might have libido issues, like all this stuff. And it's interesting that literally all of it is avoidable or reparable and isn't even that difficult. But because there are There are finally more people like me, more people who are, you know, my my title is intimacy expert to millions. And I've been lucky to do this for 20 years. It's my second career. I had a very successful career in Silicon Valley. And then I took all my business knowledge. I really run a tech company. I mean, we've got 20 people in our business, my husband and I. We run a tech company because we have to digitally deliver all of our online programs, our eBooks, et cetera. There's a, and, and we have the sex tips newsletter every week. And so delivering sex tips over email ain't easy, you know? So, <laughs> so I think it's really one of those things where the number one takeaway I want to give your listeners today is that you listen to Justin because you're mindset oriented and goal oriented, and you're always trying to increment your skills. So thank you for listening to our conversation today because what we're really going to be talking about is what do you need to learn next? Where are you going and how do you figure that out? And I think that's the hard part. You always give me this hard reminder whenever I start researching you again that no matter where you are in your relationship arc, romance and sex are important and don't give up on it. It doesn't matter. You actually answered my standard final question around what class you'd like to teach talking about the sex life bucket list. Mm -hmm. And also wrapped up in that conversation, I asked you a question about hot sex and you gave me the the two answers. You need trust and novelty. And we we talked pretty extensively about trust, I think with the sexual soulmate pack and just communication in general. If people want to go back and listen to that episode, I think that it was super foundational, but we didn't really get Mm -hmm. that much of a chance to talk about 
the novelty, which I think this sex life bucket list really brings to the table here. Because at the end of the day, it's like, I'm guessing everybody feels this way. I do want to have a better sex life. And I'm excited about my sex life. I just don't really know what to do next, as you mentioned. Yes, exactly. And I think these fun ideas that you threw out there got me really excited again to keep moving forward there. So why don't we just talk about the concept of the sex bucket life before we really get into it? Why did you create it? And, you know, what was kind of the thought process around building it? Yeah, so the sex life bucket list is essentially, you go to sex life bucket list, Dot com and you enter your name and email address. You'll be, you'll be entered onto my sex tips newsletter. You can unsubscribe anytime if you only want to get the list and then be gone. But I think you'll like my newsletter. The newsletter's good too. The newsletter's good. It is. <laughs> That's so fun. Yes. <laughs> but what you get when you go there is a PDF that you download onto your computer. You can print it out at home or just do it online. So I don't collect your sex life bucket list. I didn't want to do a, like a survey type of quiz thing because there's a lot of those kind of quizzes out there. And frankly, they have nasty shit on them. Like just stuff that you're like, you wouldn't want to do this with your partner because then you, you and your partner would have to like talk about, no, we don't want to urinate on each other. You know, like, why is that even on somebody's sex? I mean, the number of people that want golden showers, they already know they want that. They're already doing that. Like, we don't need to have that peeing on someone like that's supposed to be hot right so what I did was what I realized was that people love techniques and they love communication skills and they love to know how to remediate their sexual health so they have fabulous genitals <laughs> but and, and I teach all those things but what people really love is when I give them ideas for sexy times and sexy times are what I like to call erotic play dates. So a lot of times when couples, when one person wants more sex than the other, it's often, let's just say that it's generally the man who wants more sex than the woman. Generally, that's way more common because guys have more testosterone. They get morning erections. They masturbate almost daily. They have fast acting hemodynamics. So, so they get an erection really quickly where women's erectile arousal systems take not two minutes, but like 20 minutes. So it takes us longer to get fully erect because we've got the same am amount of erectile tissue inside our vulva as you do in your penis. But it's just like an English muffin. It's got a lot of nooks and crannies. So it's just slower to get the blood flow into there. <laughs> but we need that time to get turned on. So when our partners are like, hey, do you want to have sex? We're like, no, because we're not there. We're not already playing with ourselves every day and getting all this testosterone and morning wood and masturbating and watching porn and all the stuff our dudes do. And so then our guys get shut down like, no, I don't want sex because they make too big an offer for us. Mm -hmm. And they forget the flirting, the romance and the setup. And, the, and so I say to guys, turn around and come back and get us. And the idea of, of having an erotic play date, that's where it's like, oh, okay, so we're going to learn things together. We're going to begin as beginners together. That's going to create new relationship energy that we wouldn't get if we just went down the same old pathway we always go because it's a sure thing and we know we can have an orgasm. Well, that's great, but you can have 20 kinds of orgasms. And why wouldn't you want to learn how to have them all? You learned one and you learned one pathway or two pathways. Why not 10, 20, 30 pathways? So the notion, and by the way, the sex life bucket list, it works for singles as well as people in relationships. So if you are currently not with a partner, there are lots of erotic play days you can have with yourself. So what I did was I took all, all the different ideas I had for fun times, fun sexing times together and said, instead of asking for sex, plan erotic play dates. That'll keep the new relationship energy going. That's the variety and the novelty. You've already got the safety and security if you're with a partner, right? It's the variety and novelty that you need to keep a flame for each other. So when you download that PDF, I also created a video. And I think the very first erotic play date, if you're partnered, that you should have, and if you're solo, do it as well, because I do it for solo people too, is to watch the video when you've got the PDF printed out in front of you. Make that the first date. Order your takeout, have it delivered, whatever you want to do, and, and just watch the video together and let me take you through the sex life bucket list. And basically what I do, there's 48 playdate ideas there, erotic playdates. And 
I describe each of them and I make it sexy. It's kind of like listening to a sexy podcast with a (laughs) printout where you get to try on these 48 playdate ideas and you mark each one with an A, a B or a C. The A is, oh my God, that's for sure going on my bucket list. You know, we keep talking about doing it, but we never do it, right? (laughs) So that's a, that's an A. B is, it's not on my bucket list, but if it's on my partner's bucket list and they want to do it, I'd totally be down for doing that with them. So that's the Bs. And then the Cs are, it's not for me right now. Because if you're in your 20s or your 30s, by the time you get to your 40s or 50s, you'll look back on those things you used to look at it and go, that's some freaky shit. I don't want to do that. And you'll be looking at it and going, ooh, that looks freaky. (laughs) (laughs) Because you mature. And you get more confidence and you get more skill and you develop more pathways to pleasure. And so you're looking for new things. So wherever you are, the sex life bucket list kind of meets you where you are and lets you get a list of eight things. And then if you're lucky enough to have a partner, you can compare them. You can make a conjoined bucket list. And then once a week, maybe you have a date, you know, like every Thursday night for the next six months, we've committed to having an erotic play date together. And we're just going to learn the things that are on our bucket list. And that really, that takes your sex life to new levels of confidence. You lose performance anxiety. It goes away. You start lasting longer. She starts having more orgasms. You start having more fun. You create memories. Some of the things you try the first time, you're going to be like, well, that was weird. (laughs) <laughs> and then you have a memory and you're like, remember that time we did that thing? And oh my God, right? So it, even if it doesn't go great, it still goes great in the, in the end because you're putting yourself out there and trying new things. Yeah, I agree. I actually started on the list before I watched the video. And then I was like, all right, there's a few things on here. I don't really understand what they are. And then I went exactly. back and clicked on the video and you do a really great job breaking it down. And honestly, making me feel a little bit more comfortable about everything as well. You're so Mm -hmm. good at like demystifying it and not Mm -hmm. like looking at it from like this like shame lens, but really like, hey, this is what you could do. This is a possibility that's out there. And I found, I don't know if this is true and I don't know how many responses you've seen or people that have shared their bucket list with you as well. Felt like mine was fairly balanced between the A, Bs and Cs. I mean, slanted a little heavy towards the A's, but -hmm. also knowing you and putting the yet on the C's too. I allowed a little bit more to flow to the C's as well. Cause I was like, oh, that's not a complete cross off. I'm just not there yet. Yeah. But I found my partner had way more A's than I did. Like it was Ooh. pretty much like A, Ooh, A, Justin. A, A. Damn, you lucky dog. I know, I know. I feel, I feel grateful for that for sure. Yeah. Cause she was pretty much like, yeah, whatever. Like I'm, I'm open to it. Do you find that pretty, pretty common? And, and maybe is that a male, female thing? Do you, do you no, think? Really? Not at all. It's mm. all over the map. One of the things I will tell you is, and this is so cute. A lot of times, you know, I always ask people like, okay, so what was on your list? You know, whenever I see them or whatever. And I'll, I'll ask people to email me back what, what their lists are too. And the number one thing on men's list is so, so damn cute and sweet. It's, I want to do whatever she wants to do. That's my number one. Like Mm -hmm. I just, my A is all her A's. (laughs) Because men really, you know, guys, they get a bad rap for being, you know, insensitive, horn dogs, taking theirs, you know, that kind of thing. And really that's just out of not knowing how her operating system works. And that's a lot of what I spend time doing is teaching men how women work so that they can pleasure them better. So what men want to do is give their woman unbelievable pleasure. That's what they want to do is their number one thing. Number two thing that guys are most interested in is having male multiple orgasms, having orgasms without ejaculation so they Mm -hmm. can last as long as she wants them to. So it's kind of partly that they understand that if they, if they don't come too fast and ejaculate too fast, not come, because you can come without having an ejaculation, right? They're two separate systems in the body. Yeah, can you break it's that a, down a little bit too for yeah, us? Yeah, it's really interesting. Ejaculation is a very, very interesting thing. So men have learned to ejaculate and have an orgasm, but you can have a whole bunch of full body orgasms without ejaculating, and then you can choose to ejaculate if you want to. So it's learning how to run your energy. One of the programs I have is called Multi-Orgasmic Lover for Men. I'll give it to you if you don't have it. I don't remember if I gave it to you. 
multi-orgasmic lover for men teaches basically this experience and you teach yourself to do it during masturbation and then you can bring it right into lovemaking with a partner. So it's nice because you teach your body how to do it and then you become unconsciously competent at it so that you can do it during lovemaking. And it essentially teaches you how to know when you're getting close to your point of no return where you would end up ejaculating and to be able to pull your energy back and pull that energy like basically out of your penis and up into your body by using a technique called the me breath, which is a a certain way you squeeze your PC muscles while you do a specific type of an in-breath and you use a pelvic rock, a loosening of your pelvis. And that lets you pull back from the urge to ejaculate. And then you learn how to pull back and pull pull the pleasure up into your body, connected to your heart, connected to your brain, shoot it out the top of your head. And that lets you run these orgasmic, this orgasmic energy, which has this profound effect on your partner because when they see you having orgasm after orgasm, it triggers their orgasm. You're vibrating together. You've got this harmonic resonance of turn on together. So most guys are still in the place where they're just trying not to come, you know, and so they're holding back. They're thinking about something exactly. else. But that, that pulls me out of the moment, though, too. And then I feel like there is that disconnect that you're mentioning. Well, the opposite of what you're mentioning, where we're in sync. Now we're out of sync and she knows something is wrong because I'm sitting there trying not to. <laughs> she knows the minute you disconnect from her, the minute. And that takes her down, makes it harder for her to come during intercourse. And so orgasms from intercourse are a learned skill that all women have the ability to do. We all learn all the gasms and there's 20 kinds for her and 20 kinds for him. And the 20th one is wild card because there are still orgasms I'm discovering. (laughs) So I'm an orgasmonaut. I practice orgasmic expansion. I learn it so I can teach other people how to do it. And I'm always learning new things. It's crazy how orgasmic our bodies are. So the me breath helps guys with learning how to basically transmute this out the penis to up into the body so they can come and come and come without ejaculating and then ejaculate when they want to. That's called ejaculatory choice. For women, it's very similar. You know how you know how you ejaculate and urinate out of the end of your penis? Mm -hmm. So women have our urethral canal, the thing that runs down the tube that runs down your penis. We have that inside us. We have the same thing. We have all the same parts, just arranged in different order. And we can ejaculate and urinate out of our urethral canal. So we can have female ejaculatory or quote unquote squirting orgasms. All women can do it. It's not pee. Just like you don't pee inside us when you come, we can ejaculate and urinate as well. So it's interesting that for men, their number one thing is learning how to have ejaculatory choice and women's, and then their number two is exploring their P-spot orgasm, which is the prostate. So there's a lot of really great toys now that help men have these prostate orgasms. And older men really like that, especially because it's helpful for them so that they don't get BPH and, and they're up all night peeing. They need that prostate stimulation. So if you learn P-spot orgasms as a young man, you're going to have a healthy prostate your whole life. And then for women, top two things on their list are learn how to have orgasms from intercourse. I didn't even know I could learn how. I just thought I couldn't do it. And number two is female ejaculation. Women want to experience their feminine waters. They're like, oh, okay, well, so if everybody can do it and it's not pee, I get that whole thing you're saying about the system. There's a little muscle that traps, you know, that shuts off the bladder, both for you and for me right? So women want that. But then they also have all these fun ideas. You know, I want to do role play. I want to do a lingerie photo shoot. I want to try sex positions in a different location. I want to, you know, they have all these fun things they want to try. And that's, I think, what the Sex Life Bucket List does is it gets you to think about what you want the most and in what order so you can begin to learn them because they're all learnable skills. And I'd say that if there's anything I'm the most happy about with the Sex Life Bucket List, it's being able to let people understand that sex is just a series of stacked learnable skills that you can add to over time to become a masterful lover and you just keep getting better and better your whole life and your sex life keeps getting better and better and it keeps you 
passionate and creative and connected and calm and happy and young. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you have a, a guide or helpful videos for female ejaculation? Yeah. One of my programs is called Female Liquid Orgasm, and I've helped thousands and thousands of women and their partners help their women release their feminine waters. We call it the divine nectar or amrita, that, <laughs> that fluid. FemaleLiquidOrgasm.com. There's some free reports there that you can get if you're not ready to purchase that teach you all about it, the truths and myths about it, etc. So that's just a really lovely experience to have as a couple. I also have a website called G Spot Joy. G-S-P-O-T-J-O-Y.com. And that's where I show you how to use G-Spot tools and wands and toys. But I always think it's best to start by understanding how to do it with your fingers first. Because when you use toys, you know, that's a very delicate area of a woman up inside her vagina on the roof of her vagina, which is where the G-Spot, which is not a spot, it's a sponge, it's a long tube, and it moves around. So it's not like there's a spot. I really think that it's important to understand how to do it with your fingers first and then move on to toys. But what I do is I actually, in the gspotjoy.com, I give you a guide, but I did an explicit video showing exactly how to use the toys because it's a little counterintuitive how they work and the manufacturers sell them without any instructions. So I created instructions for that. So you can download the guide. And if you don't want to see an explicit video, you don't have to watch it. But you get an email that says, if you click this, you're going to see an explicit video <laughs> of how to use the toys. And I think that's a nice way to do it so that, you know, I meet you where you are. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> do you remember the first time you orgasmed from intercourse? Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Really? Because you might expand it on the story. No, not at all. I, I'm, with, I'm with Tim, my husband, Sir Tim, for 31 years now. And about 11 years into our marriage, I told him that, you know, I was, I was not really happy with our sex life and he wasn't happy either. And we decided to do something about it. And one of the issues I had was that I had been making love to him for over a decade without ever having an orgasm from it. And I just didn't want to do it anymore. Like it just wasn't satisfying to me. And so he's like, we're going to learn how. <laughs> I'm going to solve this problem. <laughs> yeah, so you'll him. have all the intercourse <laughs> you can. And when we just set about learning how to do it, one of the things that was the most important was learning how to get me fully aroused before I was penetrated. And for so many women, when the sex isn't really that satisfying for them, they just want to get it over with. And so that actually accelerates the problem because they're never getting to their point of arousal that they need. They're on the guy's time clock, not on their time clock. You have to go on the woman's time clock because guys get, are already turned on. They enter the scene with a hard on <laughs> and they're it's already true. turned on. And that's great, but you have to be able to slow down and get her to the point where she's got her clitoral erection because she has as much erectile tissue inside her as you as a male body partner have outside you. So when couples are like, oh, okay, we've been really rushing it. And, and a lot of guys are like, she rushes it. And I'm like, I know you can't allow her to rush it. You have to give her yoni massages, breast pleasuring, kissing, full body touch, words of encouragement and adoration. You know, these are all really, really important things. Like one of the things on the sex life bucket list is learning how to talk dirty without feeling weird. And there's a link on the bucket list to my free ebook called Dirty Talk that teaches you the five ways to talk dirty without feeling weird. So if you want to do that, it's for, it's a free thing. And it's nice because it's like a lot of people really need, women need encouragement and adoration. Men need to know you're turned on and they're doing a great job. And it doesn't have to be, you know, dirty talk. Dirty talk can be sensual talk, pillow talk, sexy talk, encouraging talk. And so that's what I like people to do is I like them to think about expanding what they consider as bedroom language to include these five ways of talking dirty. And moaning is also really good. People are very quiet. They don't give each other enough auditory feedback. So you never know quite where you are. Did that feel good? I don't know. Did you come? I don't know. So that's important too. I heard you talk about this story. Is it true that you dated someone that was like hard of hearing and that was really your 
early intro into getting louder in the bedroom? Yes. Yeah. He said, I need a lot of auditory feedback to know I'm doing a good job and I'm hard of hearing in this ear. And I could never remember which ear it was. (laughs) Because sometimes I'll be moaning so loud. I'll say, am I hurting your ears? Am I too loud? And everybody's always like, no, I love it. But I'm careful about that because I can get... At this point now that I kind of, the genie's out of the bottle, I'm like a moaner. I'm a crazy (laughs) moaner. But here's what I do. I never make any noises or move my body or do things that indicate more than where I'm at. Mm. So I want my partner to know that if I'm not moaning and I'm not writhing and I'm not like, I'm not there yet. I have learned, and this is something that's very hard for us women, because we are people pleasers. We want to do a good job for you. We want you to be happy. And so we'll end up making noises or moaning or faking orgasms or whatever, feeling like if if it takes too long, there's something wrong. And what I'm constantly encouraging women and their partners to do is to just Be exactly what you are in that moment at all times with no artifice and work on expanding your pleasure together and work on the stimulation and work on the encouragement and work on the sexiness because pretty soon you'll, the yoni massages, the oral pleasuring, the breast play, the kissing, having your penis in her hand so she can feel your hardness, having her play with your strong biceps and run her fingers through your hair and looking in each other's eyes. And all of those things will just keep turning her on and turning her on and turning her on. And soon you'll get enough engorgement of blood flow to her genitals that everything you do is making her moan. It is honest to God, great sex. The foundation of it is relaxation and blood flow. And the blood can't flow till you're relaxed. That's why holding her full body massage, adoration are so important. She's got to relax with you. And guys are under the, they're ready to go and they're under the impression they got to get her turned on, you know? So they're like pushing, twinkling the dials and pushing the buttons. And she hasn't even been held yet. And so it's really understanding that our animal bodies that we live in cannot be rushed, that all women are very slow to arouse compared to men. To give us the time and the stimulation and the love and the sensuality and the sexiness and the grr, baby, that we need will get us there so that we can cross that gasm gasm. We can close that orgasm gap. And on the penetration orgasm stuff, I have a series of videos. I have a playlist at betterlover.com. If you go to betterlover.com and you type in intercourse or penetration, you'll see a bunch of videos pop up. And those are all of the things that you can do and try so that you can easily come just from intercourse without even touching the tip of your clit. You can have orgasms just from making love. And there's two things. One is it's mostly about letting her get aroused enough so that all that erectile tissue inside her gets fluffed up so that it's bigger and sends more pleasure signals to her brain. The second thing is making sure that as a guy, you have good penis technique. Number one, you want to be really firm. So using a penis pump, I've written a book called The Pumping Guide. It's at pumpingguide.com. And it teaches you how to use a vacuum erection device to keep a firm erection your whole life long. And it keeps you big and thick and firm and veiny and wonderful. And it even makes you bigger, which a lot of guys are pumping for enlargement. They're maybe five inches and they want to be six or six. They want to be seven or whatever. Nothing wrong with that. It's healthy. It works. It's like bodybuilding. I think that's very important for guys that have had a lot of atrophy or they're quite old. They've really lost firmness. They're reliant on Viagra. They should be using Gaines Wave. Women who've lost their lubrication, they're incontinent, they can't feel their orgasms as well anymore. They should be using Femi Wave. These are acoustic wave treatments you can go get. So there's ways to make sure you keep your package, your equipment in good order, and then get the blood flow into there and then understand how to use your penis in a vagina. That's very important too. 
And I have a series of articles on my website at personallifemedia.com that is under the category of making whoopee. You can just put in making whoopee, W-H-O-O-P-E-E. And I've got about a dozen intercourse techniques because guys often think about the vagina as like an inside out penis. It's like it's a sheath, it's a channel, it's a canal, but it's actually more like a pocket. It only turns into a canal when you get super aroused and when you have children. It's really more of a pocket. And so there's, there's all kinds of places inside the vagina that need to be stimulated. And there's different stroke techniques, like one of the sex life bucket list erotic play dates is to use this technique called thrust in time. And thrust in time is an intercourse technique that gives him stamina and gives her orgasms from intercourse. It's a 10 count short and long thrusting technique that over time as you do it, you get unconsciously competent. You don't even have to count anymore. You just now know you want to do short strokes and long strokes and this is how you do it and all this stuff. So thrust in time is a really good one. You can get that at thrustintime.com directly or you can get it at the Sex Life Bucket List. Learning those techniques and getting her engorged. And there's a few other things on the checklist. That's what helps a woman finally have orgasms from intercourse. I can basically now have orgasms the entire time I'm being penetrated. I just have orgasm after orgasm after orgasm. And each time I do it with my husband, I want different things. So sometimes I'm having him do a lot of shallow work. Sometimes I want it super deep. Sometimes I want it very slow. Sometimes I want it fast and pounding. So that's the other thing is having good communication allows you to tell your partner what your body's looking for in that date because every date is different. And so doing things like the sex life bucket list where you're starting to learn things and talk about things together gets you to the point where you can say anything, anytime, and you're just, you're just always in communication. And then you're getting the, the stimulation you need in that moment to always be having orgasms. I think that makes sense. And I know we talked about that. Isn't that the concept behind the sexual soulmate pack as well? I, I'm pretty sure we talked about that on it the first is. episode. You have a okay. fabulous memory. Yeah, the sexual soulmate <laughs> pact, which is most likely linked in the sex life bucket list too, but it's at sexualsoulmatepact.com. It is how you can get your partner to feel really good about receiving all the communication and how you can understand what your body wants in the moment. Because it's a most feedback, I feel like, does the reverse sometimes where you feel discouraged about it. And it's kind of defeating the purpose then. You really want to make sure it's encouraging and it makes you feel confident and uplifting. So yeah, we, we've definitely been working on that. And I think that's a, something that I'm guessing a lot of people are struggling with. The other communication tip that I really love too is naming some of the moves, like yeah. Brian's move. And, and we could go into it if you really want to, but I love that you like named that move out there so that you can tell, you can tell Tim. like, yeah. yeah, Tim, exactly what needs to happen in certain moments too. Yes, exactly. Brian's move is great. Yeah. And the making whoopee techniques are all named. There's glissando, there's crouching tiger. There's all kinds of ones. So you can be like, I really want that glissando today, you know, (laughs) and you can ask for it by name. What's whoopee too? What what, what? In in the 1960s, there was a game show called the Newlywed Game and they would never talk about intercourse or anything, but they would call it making whoopee. Making whoopee. And so I called my intercourse techniques making whoopee 3.0. It's just an old school way of, it would be like bonking. It would be like if I called it bonking techniques or something like that. Everybody knows that's intercourse. It's just a funny little word for for intercourse. (laughs) That's fun. I know. (laughs) So as we're rounding out the conversation, Mm. Susan, I think it's easy for me to sit here and see someone that is so confident and has so much love for her own body as well. But I'm very surprised that wasn't always the case. I just assumed you were this, you know, 20, 30 something, always very confident, always very sure of what she wanted. But I was listening to a story about you at Burning Man and I realized that wasn't necessarily always the case. So do you have any thoughts around building some kind of confidence or self-love and and feel free to use the, the Burning Man story as maybe a foundation for that too? Yeah, I would say that for for women especially, we have body image issues. 
Part of it's Madison Avenue and advertising and airbrushing and Instagram and all of the images that we're fed. And part of it is that we're estrogen dominant and estrogen is a molecule of safety because we women are prey, not the predators. And estrogen, in addition to making our skin supple and giving us our period, it also makes us judgy. We're much more judgmental. Like guys are like, why are you being so judgmental? And it's like, well, we can't actually help it. It's that estrogen that makes us that way because judgments help us make distinctions between what is what is scary and what is not mm. and help us process our fear. What estrogen also does is it makes us worried about things. We always have to worry about our safety and guys never even think about it. You walk through life and testosterone makes you overly confident. Most men overestimate their skills. I did a survey once and I do a lot of primary research. And one of the things that I did was I asked, I don't know, a thousand men and a thousand women to rate their sexual skills on a scale of one to 10. And then I asked them a bunch of questions about their sex life and what they did and didn't do and did know and didn't know. And then asked them to rate themselves again. The women rated themselves as sixes to start and sevens to end. And the men rated themselves as eight and nines to start and sevens and sixes at the end. They realized they weren't as good as they were. The women underestimated their skills and the, and the men overestimated their skills. And so it's really very much that our hormones do control a lot of our behaviors, similarly to how much sleep we've had, how much sugar and booze we've been eating, you know, all those different things. They, they have an impact on our libido and our desire and our arousal and our body image and all those things. Women naturally are judgmental about themselves. They worry about how they look. They have body image issues and they need to hear all the time, every day, that they're beautiful, that you think they're sexy. And both of those things, you can't just tell a woman she's sexy all the time or, or she'll feel objectified. You also have to appreciate other things she does, how smart she is, et cetera. You have to help her understand how beautiful she is to you mm. so that she can relax when she's with you and not worry that her boobs are saggy or her butt is fat or there's cellulite on her thighs or whatever, because she worries about that. When I was in my 30s, I was stunningly gorgeous and did not know it. <laughs> and now I'm in my 60s and I'm still stunningly gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> And I am confident to say that because I really work on my beauty and I work on my prettiness. It's important to me. But my body is, you know, I have wrinkly skin and things, but I'm strong and I work out and I feel good and feel pretty in my body now. And I was way prettier 30 years ago and didn't. So one of the things that's also important is that every time we have an insecurity as a woman, we have to just use our meditation skills and say, I'm going to let that go. Bring myself back to my pleasure and my connection with my lover. That doesn't matter. He doesn't see it. Testosterone has rose colored goggles. It <laughs> looks at women and it's like, I love that squishy fat. I want to grab that ass. I love those boobs. I love that belly. They like gynoid fat. That's the fat of a woman. I mean, not all men, some men like those super hard bodied women and that's fine. They find them. But generally men like our form and think it's stunning and they like the imperfections of us. So the more we can encourage our women to just really enjoy themselves and know that it isn't going to get any more beautiful than it is right now. You're, it's a downhill slope to your death. You're only on this earth for a short amount of time. Every second you spend self-flagellating over cellulite when you could be having incredible wild bucking orgasms cowgirl style on his manhood <laughs> in the bedroom, you're choosing the wrong path. I don't know if there's something in there that will help you as a listener that I've said, but I hope it will. I think there's a lot there, Susan. <laughs> what a fun conversation. <laughs> Always have a blast talking to you. Same Z's, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Hopefully we get to connect in April whenever you're in Austin. I'm yeah. really stoked for that. But Good. if people are interested in completing the sex life bucket list, tell them one more time, where do they find that? Yeah, sex life 
bucketlist.com. Super easy. What a good URL you got there. <laughs> <laughs> so Susan, I always wrap things up with the standard question and, and you've already answered it in part one. So maybe we can elevate it from a one-on-one class that you would teach to a group of graduating college seniors to maybe a 201 level class. So let's say that they are rocking and rolling. They completed their sex life bucket list. What's something that you would like to share with them? What's a class that you would like to teach to maybe our our next level students that are out there? Yeah, I'd like to teach expanded orgasm. Expandherorgasmtonight.com is where it is. There's three free pleasure reports there that you can learn more about what the expanded orgasm practice is. I really like the expanded orgasm practice because it's a cross between a yoni massage and fingering. And what it essentially is, is a five stroke clitoral technique that allows a woman to go into a level of orgasmic intensity and radiating pleasure that no other sex technique can give her. It's also really good because you get better and better at it over time. So it's fantastic for monogamous couples. That's when your skills get really, really good together. And so you can start foreplay with, and I I really don't even like the term foreplay because honestly, all the foreplay is sex to us women. You know, it's not just intercourse. It's everything is, should be equally weighted and we should do all the things, not just, you know, grab a boob and stick it in. Mm -hmm. And, um, expanded orgasm, what it does is it puts full attention on a woman's orgasmic pleasure. It allows her to not just take the orgasm that she has and have many of them. It doesn't even take the moment of time and expand the moment of time so that her orgasms are longer. It also, over time, gives her a level of intensity of orgasmic pleasure and sensation that's incredible. And so you think about it like it's not just one, it's not just multiples, it's not just longer, it's longer and more intensifying because as you stroke her clitoris with this very simple technique, there's three opening strokes, a bread and butter stroke, and a closing stroke. And when a couple has maybe two times a week where they lay down and they just have this orgasmic experience together, he learns how to tune into her limbic system in a way that no other practice gives him the ability to do, she gets to learn how to have 100% of the attention on her pleasure. He gets to, and I'm using a him and her, it can be any, anybody with a vulva owner. He gets to learn how to take her from not orgasming to orgasming, to expanding orgasms, to multiple orgasms, to these really intense orgasms. That makes him feel like an incredible lover. And he gets to take her on a ride. She's following him. So he's in control, which he loves to take her on this journey. And what's great about it is that expanded orgasm was one of the things that we did, Tim and I learned how to do, that really helped me cross that gasm chasm with intercourse. When I became a really good orgasmer from expanded orgasm, that flowed over into the experience I had from intercourse. So the three things that I think really helped me cross the orgasm gap and come from intercourse were number one, getting totally honest with him and telling him whatever was going on with me and my body in the moment and feeling comfortable that he wasn't going to contract, that he loved the information. Number two was understanding our relationship values, understanding that What he wants out of a relationship is different than what I want. And when I get up every day and focus on what he wants and he does the same for me, we play by the platinum rule instead of the golden rule. I'm not doing to him what I want to be done to me. I'm doing to him what he wants and he's doing to me what I want. And we're communicating that. That helped me not have any issues with him. Like I was in a great relationship. So it was easier for me to orgasm from intercourse because it was the out of the bedroom stuff that started getting really good. And then having this expanded orgasm practice where I was able to start coming super well from this light stroking and that got my body fully engorged and turned on so that I just naturally wanted more intercourse. So instead of it being intercourse focused, like I had to have intercourse, he wouldn't have intercourse with me. He would just do these expanded orgasm practices. And then that made me feel less pressure. And then when the pressure was off and my, and I was orgasming well and my yoni had all that blood flow, 
I wanted the intercourse and I was coming from it. And that was so empowering for us both. Mic drop there, Susan Bratton, intimacy expert to millions. Susan, such a pleasure. Thank you, Justin. Guys, Susan Bratton, that was such a fun episode. I'm so glad she was back for a part two. We got to dive a little bit deeper into part of the novelty piece, which I think is something that you definitely need to explore if you're feeling stale right now. I took her sex life bucket list and we got a lot of really great ideas out of it. And I'm excited to put together these weekly play dates whenever Gabby finally decides to actually come back home from all of her traveling. But once again, Susan Bratton, if you want to check out the original episode, that's episode 63. And I I do like her too, because she's not all about like this gross, weird part of sex, but really truly cultivating romance and intimacy in your sex life. And I loved how we, at the beginning, talked about the importance of sex in relation to your health. So once again, check her out, episode 63, if you want to get a part one out of her. And once again, sexlifebucketlist.com. Thanks for listening to the episode. As always, I appreciate your kind words. If you want to leave us a rating and review on your podcast player right now, that would absolutely make my day. If you want to find episode show notes, our blog, and other great resources, head over to tsirpodcast.com. If you have follow-up questions, an idea for a future episode, or just want to say hi, we have a contact form on our website and those messages go straight into my inbox and I promise you, I will reply. But all right, guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. I love you all and you're not alone. Let's keep making it through our struggles together.